Let's move on a bit. What's the role of hormonal therapy in patients who have migraine with their period? Deb? You know, there are a lot of different ways to approach menstrual migraine. Uh, and many women who have migraine find that they have migraines that are a lot worse um, and a lot more severe around the time of their periods, even though they may have them at other times of the month. Um, and it, you know, headache specialists to some extent approach this differently than gynecologists do. And uh, in, in the headache world, I think we're more likely to either use a, a short-term mini prophylaxis, such as a long-acting triptan, or maybe transiently increase the dose of whatever oral preventive the person is already taking. Um, and, uh, but sometimes, we, you know, we do end up using hormonal therapy. And the options are either using a very low dose estrogen oral contraceptive um, and using it continuously for three to six months, uh, trying to suppress ovulation and trying to suppress that drop in ex estrogen right before the menstrual period starts. Um, other people will use an estrogen patch just around the time of the menstrual period. Um, but but there, there are potentially hormonal therapies that can be employed. What about the use of estrogen in somebody with migraine with aura? I was just going to volunteer that little bugaboo if you didn't bring it up. Okay. Uh, because, you know, this is um, a hurdle that, that I will face. Often, more often than not, I'll have a woman with migraine with aura comes into me and says, my gynecologist won't give me a birth control pill until you say it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they have a much different philosophy on this. Their guidelines differ from some of the other medical societies. And so I, I have to say, well, I, I can't tell you that it's absolutely okay. Nothing is without risk. So, you know, let me break down the numbers. You know, sure, there's, there's a baseline risk that you could have a stroke if you didn't have migraine or any medical problems. It's really, really low. If you have migraine, it goes up a little. Migraine with aura, up a little bit more. Now you add an oral contraceptive, which we know carries a risk for stroke or other thrombotic events. It keeps going up, and in fact, it multiplies. But the number you're left with is still pretty low, maybe 30 to 40 per 100,000 for a healthy young woman. So when they hear those numbers, they're, they're more reassured that the risk that they're taking is worth the benefit that they may get. It's all about risk benefit, right? Agreed. Any other comments? No, I find that patients who are entering the perimenopausal period tend to do particularly bad, badly with, with a lot of fluctuations in estrogen. And those patients can be very hard to manage. Um, I find that group actually does best with an estrogen supplement, but they're also a very high risk group for, for supplementation. My bias, and there's actually studies to prove it, that an estrogen patch, transdermal estrogen, perimenopausal is safe, effective, and <clears throat> stabilizes the situation. And I would also point out that the controversy a couple years ago of not replacing hormones in the perimenopause was false. The analysis clearly showed that the people did worse, but they didn't account for the fact that the estrogens were started six to 10 years after menopause. When they reanalyzed their data, they showed that immediate replacement with estrogens was beneficial. That's why you have to be very careful while you read all these studies. So my bias is in the perimenopause, it makes sense to use estrogen replacement by patch. It's also really important to keep in mind that a lot of the studies that were done that the uh, American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has based their guidelines on were done based on really old data um, using oral contraceptives that have 50, 50 micrograms of ethanyl estradiol in them, which had a very high risk for thrombosis and stroke. And the oral contraceptives that we use now are completely different. Um, and I, I think it's just really not right <laughs> to be very dogmatic about um, making statements based on those data. You're absolutely 100% correct, and you read my mind. Uh, International Headache Society, one time, created guidelines for hormonal contraception. And I'll remember that to my dying day. I flew to Paris, met all day, changed in the locker room, and left the next morning. But we created guidelines. They haven't been updated for a long time. 